All right, boys, you ready? Here she is. Oh, yeah. As you can see, pretty much the same as the photograph. A couple little things missing here and there. And I think he put some smaller wheels on it. I have no idea why I needed this. I saw it, I went and looked at it, and I just felt like I couldn't live without it. So now it's here. The guy I got the car from got a little bit froggy, and tore it all apart. A lot of the parts, even though they look pretty good in that picture, he, he did not save. The entire front clip hood, the trunk, front seat, engine, transmission, rear, wheels, gone. Pretty, pretty much everything besides the, uh, the actual shell is all that's left. The photos that I showed you are from when he got it, roughly somewhere around 10 years ago from what he told me. He actually inherited the car. Luckily, this car's actually been stored indoors for the last 10 years in this condition. I think that's why it stayed, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's it's rough. This, this is... This is what you get out of a New Jersey car. And actually, this is really good for a New Jersey car. Especially, you know, this is an all-original car. This isn't something with a bunch of Bondo in it. There's no evidence of a repaint. I mean, this is... This is a good, uh, you know, pretty decent original car. It did come with this body cart, which might actually be worth more money than the car was. The goal for this project right now is just to reassemble it and turn it back into a complete car for as little investment as humanly possible. All right, so let me explain my plan of attack here. I'm going to leave this whole section underneath the front seat because I think that it's okay, usable metal. It doesn't appear to be too rusted or corroded. I'm gonna patch here, 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 and here. Well, it's out, and uh, it looks relatively squarish. Bingo. So I've got the panel cut out, and even though it's not perfectly trimmed yet, we are, like, I'm really, really close to, like, right there on the edge. I'm just gonna take my time and kind of shave it down till we get it right. Are you coming up? Are we deciding what we're doing for dinner? Tonight? I'll do a chicken roll. Chicken All right, well, we gotta cut out. Let me show you what's left. So that's what came out. The driver's side pan is finished. I used some scraps that I had laying around to fabricate a tow board. And basically I just took some leftover pieces that were cut. There's some areas of this panel that are like stepped up. Like you can see this here, it's got this step. So basically what I did with this stuff, since none of it's shaped right to that contour, is I really just used a hammer and my vise to kind of pound and move and make my own tow board. Now it's it's not perfect. If I wanted it to be perfect, I would have bought a different floor pan. I wouldn't I wouldn't have used the pan that ended at you know right at the base of the firewall. It's a budget build and we made it work and it's gonna be fine. You don't have to be a professional to do this job. If you're looking to just get it done. You can do it. The only way you're gonna learn how to work on these old cars is to just do it and figure it out. At the time that I first started, I had no experience with welding on anything like this. This is my first time ever welding sheet metal at all. And now that, I'm, now that I've done it, I feel way more confident. Some of the rust areas that were in the window channel here, we fixed on those, welded in a couple patches. There was, couple holes along this tray here. So we welded in a couple patches in here. And I just hit it with like a, hit it with like a brown paint so you can't really see it. We're gonna throw, this is the 8.2 10 bolt that came out of the green car when we put the curry in it, which we saved on all the brake lines. I reassembled the drum brakes in here. 
So they're good to go. Basically, we're gonna put this thing together with free parts because they came off of the other project. As of right now, money invested into this is, as of right now, is nothing. Only the cost of the shell with the title. Everything that we've acquired for it, we've basically scavenged off of stuff we either had or the parts car. Well, if you guys are wondering what the entire front clip of a Nova looks like shoved in your wife's uh, Honda Pilot, that's what it looks like. car came with a lot of stuff. The seats were free. The fenders came off a donor car. So we're gonna swap this door that was off of a 70, which is my the parts car. I also was able to get out the front glass. Now, it is cracked. Ouchie mama. But uh, we're gonna use it anyway. It's out of the budget to put a new windshield in this right now, to use this windshield in that car. And the budget, the budget's gotten tight, so. We're making do with what we got here. Check this stuff out. Oh yeah, now this is gonna be perfect. As you can see, she's pretty well, pretty well rotted. We're gonna have, I'm gonna have to figure something out here in this back corner because the mounting location for the rear hinge is gone. So when you try and close the hood, it just folds. This will work perfect for the blue car. And then we got a trunk lid, which you can see here. You know, this is a small workable. That's, yeah, that's, we could pound, uh, just a little bit of love will take that right out. And, uh, now this is just junk. Yeah, this, this one's just junk. I mean, once I cut all this out, and it's just a deck lid, it'll be lighter, lighter junk. I was also able to score the, uh, the back bumper off of the car. It's better than no bumper, right? Oh, and this is cool too. This is so rusted that when you fold it down, it stays. So unlike, you know, normal GM cars where you gotta fight with this the whole time where you're trying to put gas in, this is like the self-holding version, you know? So you can fill her up. like brand new. This stuff is garbage. Like garbage, garbage. But uh, it's free garbage. So as you can see, this door is shot. Well, at least the door skin anyway. And you could throw a bunch of Bondo at it, but that's not really gonna work. Maybe it needs more hardener. Nope, still looks like crap. So anyway, what we've decided to do is just remove the door entirely and replace it with the door with the better door skin. Oh, it's out. Okay, now let's see if we can get the top one out, dump the door, break the glass, make a mess. This should be free. for the fun one. Hey listen, can can you just look in there and tell me what the can't get the pin to go in. Tell me which way it moves when I lift up. Oh no, you can't you can't see it? Well thanks for the help anyway. Whoa. Take it easy there. Whew. That was close. I'd like to meet the engineer who decided to uh, weld on the hinges and just punch, punch him right in the mouth. Why do you hate me? She's in. Oh my God, where'd all this rust come from? Must have been, must have been from the old door. Now we just gotta line up the door. Check this out. 
I mean, as long as as long as we can all admit that it's junk, that's all that really matters, right? I mean, it's not good, but it's better. Come on, I mean, admit it. It's got the bottom of the door skin, so that's that's better than no door skin. That's dangerous. I did some trimming on this high quality trunk lid here. As you can see, a little, little bit of, we trimmed some of this out, made this a little less deadly. I mean, really that's just weight reduction. You didn't even, you don't need any of that metal. Don't set it on that. It's a little, it's a little flexible. Oh yeah. Oh no way. Who's a finger? How is there still stuff coming out of this? perfectly massaged the damage from where it was light, lightly rear-ended. You can't even tell. Oh my god. And if you need the tweak on it, there's no structure, so you could just do it whenever you want. Why is there still stuff coming out? It's not bad. A sticker will cover this up great. No one will know. Now, come on, give me, give me a break. I know, like, 35 of you are freaking out. Why would you bolt that stuff, you know, to the car? Let's take a step back. This stuff is all bolt-on stuff. And, you know, even though we don't have the, the money to fix on it the right, the right way right now, this is all stuff we can come back to later on. Oh, I, I like it. We got some carpet. As you can tell, I mean, it's definitely not the right shade of blue. It's definitely way too light, but I have a plan. I have a plan. Don't worry, I've got a plan. It's just too bright for me. But let me tell you why we bought this. If you know anything about carpet for these cars, they run about 150 at the cheapest, all the way up to 200 bucks. And I found this brand new in the box. You had it marked for 100 bucks, and we paid 90. Strong negotiating there. So I hung up the carpet on the wall in the basement, because that's what you do with it. And I used like an interior fabric paint in a flat black color. And I just kind of misted the carpet, and now it is perfect. Definitely darkened it up a whole lot. Now you can see that with like something that actually belongs in the blue interior, that the blue is way closer. So it doesn't like jump out and bite you. I figured we start with the back so that way we can break the good glass. <laughs> All right, how confident you feel? You in? I'm in, yeah. Is it hooked in? Can you, can you... Oh, come on, man. You wrecking my bumper now? I like this bumper. Everything is something like a, a single bungee cord right there. And duct tape. Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Was that cool or what? Are you really up on all your side over there? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, not a lot. That one fits perfectly. Yours? And this one's way that off. Yeah, no, I just realized that too. Well, you see, you only need some of the hardware to hold it on. You don't need it all. <laughs> 
I get carried away here. It appears that this one's going to get one screw. Yours might get two. <laughs> Maybe if we're lucky. We're about to self tapper these. 45 degree angle, good enough for me. I found this hardware at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, come on, Dan. Jesus. You just stop me when, I, when I'm out of line. <laughs> Install. <clears throat> I, I mean, three's enough. <clears throat> what was that? I don't know. I don't want to know how that works. <laughs> No, that's not Bondo, that's just, um... Patina? Yeah, Patina. Yeah. What is creaking? Like, it's really nasty. Nice. I mean, I hope it needs to be adjusted and the whole thing's not... Yeah, it's what are you talking about? It's expertly adjusted. I, I, I installed it myself. I know what we're missing. You gotta be like the you gotta be like the safe light guy when he comes to your work to install it, you know? <laughs> now don't take these off for at least two days. <laughs> Cause this masking tape's holding the back window in. I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, it looks better. That went pretty well. All right, you want to try and get the trim clipped on that one? I made a little patch over here. I cut the rust out. And uh, we're just going to weld this right over top. And I know this is inner inner wheelhouse and this is outer wheelhouse and I don't really care. I'm just going to bridge right over top of it and then we'll seam seal all this up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spot weld to the quarter lip here. Then probably put a couple tack welds to the old inner wheelhouse that's in here. And that's going to be good enough for me. And on the back side here, we did the same thing. I've got a little little patch panel down for the bottom here and then I have a little patch panel that I made for the back and it's not perfect you know it's not great but it's at least once we get this done and these little patches welded in here at least we won't be getting water inside the quarter so that'll be good to use the death wheel try and clean up everything get it ready to spray it's actually it's actually not that bad the frame rails look great but really it's really it's pretty good for east coast car this thing is mint Got everything good and wire wheeled under there. I hate, I hate the death wheel. What? I got something where right here. Did I get it? sealed ready to go drain plugs are in it there we go
We're getting ready to undercoat on this thing. They were gonna be undercoating, so let's get to mixing here. Got our bucket seats laying in the backyard. Wire wheeled, sanded, and painted up the seat tracks because they were all rusty and gross. So we got them drying out here. I think I need an expert painter for the inside, so I know just who to call. Why painting it all black? It's all gonna be black. Uh, oh, Daniel. All right, you're doing all right. You're doing fine. What? Just remember, like, you can't go through it to get over here. So come all the way to the side. So you're doing fine. You're doing good. You do you. Daddy! You! Tell me how am I doing? Okay, I'm coming. Am I doing good? Oh, you're doing great, dude. I need a... Oh, I dude. I forgot to do it back there. I know. How are you going to get back there? I don't know. You're helping me. Yeah, I'm going to help you a little bit. He put fix the headliner. I don't know! You're alright, you're alright. Don't panic, that's why we wore crappy clothes. Yeah, I put my knee right to it. <laughs> and it didn't actually take a lot off. <laughs> and we got a hole in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's never coming off. Stand on that first, and then paint the front. And then we'll fix it. Then we'll fix what? My shoes. Uh, your shoes are done. My Dude, favorite shoes. Do you have paint on your face? Daddy, it, I finished it. What about those spots? What spot? This spot? What spot? Daddy, what spot? Daddy, no, and, what spot? Anything that's not painted black. All the all that yellow stuff, get that. So black. even the yellow stuff that was up there? Yep, get all that. So get all, this too? Why is the foot pedal there? I'm confused. It's the gas. It's the gas pedal. Oh. oh. The gas and brake pedal. Nice. That's the emergency brake pedal. Oh. The gas, brake, what? emergency brake. Right? Gas pedal. Wait, what you Do you that? drive a car? This? I do. I, I didn't know if, <laughs> I didn't know if this was the clutch. <laughs> It's not, no, it's an automatic. Goes, Don't put that in the video. It goes, yeah, this the high beam. It just looks like a big brake pedal. I don't know, mine's not that big. It's not, it's, nope, yours is that big. No, it's not. It is that big. I'm gonna measure it. It's not Go that measure big. it. Another thing that you guys may not know about me is that I actually spent the better part of probably close to 10 years working with my grandfather at his upholstery shop. And there's a lot of things that I learned working at the upholstery shop. Which place has the best coffee, who has the cheapest buttered rolls, how to shoot a staple gun at somebody, how to make buttons. I learned how to make a lot of buttons. Bluegrass and Johnny Cash music. World politics, how to sweep, became an expert sweeper, but I learned virtually zero upholstery. So every time it comes to me and doing something with the interior on a car, I immediately go to cheap seat covers. I gotta tighten it, the bolt under the car, and while I'm doing that, you gotta hold this here, okay? 
hold the wrench on the bolt. All right, in a second, you're gonna feel daddy pulling on it. All right, make sure it doesn't slip off. Can you feel daddy turning on it? Yep. You're holding it tight though, right? Yeah. You know the carpet has holes in it. On one side only. Just on one side. There's four holes. No, there, yeah, there's four holes in the carpet. Is that where the other seat goes? You're still holding that, right? Yeah. How's the seat feel? Does it feel tight? Yeah. Look, Madison, Daniel's a good helper. Is he a good helper? Ow, your step, Madison. Ow! How am I supposed to work under these conditions? Is it tight? Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. Full interiors in it. I would say that we have less than $200 into the entire interior package in this thing. We did this pretty cheap. I mean, look at this door panel. I literally got this for free. It says so right on the tag. We didn't buy seat tracks. Instead, I took some pallets at work, which had these blocks, and I cut up the blocks and made those work to level the seats, since we don't really know what these seats are out of or what they were made for. We have to start working on this thing. Loosely assembled the entire front subframe for the blue car, utilizing um, upper and lower control arms off of the green car. The steering linkage is all off of the green car. The steering box came off of our parts car. And and anyway, we've, we've got the, the whole subframe here ready to go. Uh, we're going to be putting the drum brakes that came off of the green car on this subframe. But the one thing that we need to do is getting this thing taken back apart. Like I said, everything is just loosely assembled. We're going to get this thing broken back down and we're going to get this subframe and the control arms and stuff. We're going to get all that sandblast and we can get this thing painted. Bam. Subframe's all sandblasted. I'm gonna be using VHT roll bar and chassis paint. This stuff, uh, you know, is heat rated, super durable.
my buddy Mike is supposed to be coming over this morning. He's going to help me get as far as we can get here. Obviously, the goal is to attempt to get this thing on the ground. That would be awesome. Turn it into a roller, so. I can't believe you're on time. Look, Mom, I do have friends. Maintenance Mike. Maintenance Mike's new office job doesn't require him to wake up this early anymore. No. Marks are still on the, on the, on the road. Oh yeah, <laughs> like you did it yet? Like you did it yesterday? Man, it's Mike vandalized my street. Of course, my neighbors are all looking at me like I did it. That just ain't right. Yeah. All right, for the first time in many years, on the ground rolling, not on the cart rolling. I really like it. All right, well, I think we're about ready to yank this thing out of the back of the truck here. Mike, it runs. It runs. All right, that 
drivetrain came out of a running driving 68 Camaro. We went and drove the car before we pulled it. It's a 327 small block. It's a two barrel. It's got a power glide transmission. We paid a thousand bucks for the engine trans and it came with the radiator, the car, you know, carb to pan, ready to go. We slid it right in the car and fired it up. And that was, you know, it doesn't get any simpler than that. All right, so I just got done replacing all the brake hoses and wheel cylinders in this thing. Now I gotta bleed brakes, and there's no one here to help me bleed brakes. Well, time out. There is someone here to help me bleed brakes. Daniel, Daniel, hey, can you help me, bud? Hopefully this goes better than the seats. Okay, pump it. Go all the way down. Three and go. Okay, hold it. Why don't you sit in the seat, dude? Why don't you sit in the seat? I did three pumps. Still holding it? Yep. I'm holding it. Okay, ready? Yep. Are you pumping? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you holding? Yeah. It's getting harder and harder. Is it? Yeah. That's good. That means the brakes are working. We're going to be working on some exhaust today. Keep in mind, this is a budget car. So I wanted to do the cheapest thing, you know, relatively cheapest thing I could find. We have here some stainless down pipes from pipes. What we also have, and my favorite part, are these mufflers. So these are some circle track car mufflers. And these things are going to be hopefully sweet. I like them because first off, they were cheap. Secondly, they're going to be loud, which I like that too. They have this little kick out, so at least we can angle the exhaust maybe out of the car. Wiring is expensive. Uh, each one of these wiring harnesses is easily over a hundred bucks. I think probably the most expensive thing that we paid for for the car. Should have just hot wired it. You know, we want lights and whatnot. All right, so the front end, you know, fenders and rad support, grill, headlights are all bolted on the car. We gotta get a hood on it. I've had this hood laying around. And this thing is roached. It's all rotted out. The hole, well, where there should be a bolt hole for the hood hinge, there's nothing there. When you try to close the hood, the hood just folds. So we're gonna have to do something here. I have the original hood hinge. I think we're just gonna weld it.
Look at that. These nails that stick out the side from where the trim used to be, they, got, they gotta go, they gotta go. But I also don't wanna just take them off and weld them shut or whatever and have a bunch of holes in the side of the car. So I have a plan to remove these bad boys but still have this thing looking like this thing, you know? All right, well, we got all these things ground out. Get it nice and smooth where we made all of our cuts. And we're also gonna have to grind, you know, some of the paint off here. Some of the paint off here so we can fill in these old holes. we don't set the car on fire. Catch the inside of the door panel, let her really go up in a blaze. None of these look beautiful, but as long as when you uh, grind them, there's not any, you know, holes and dirt and porosity and everything in it, who cares? Time to reveal what my plan is, cover up on all this. What I've decided we're gonna do is use the whole Yanko stripe. Kinda make this thing look like a junkyard Yanko that's been pieced together with miscellaneous garbage. The decal's probably gonna be way, way, way too clean and shiny and white for the car. But ultimately, if it just doesn't look right, what I'm gonna do is we'll use the decal uh, more or less as a stencil to tape off and mask off the Yanko stripe and We'll paint it, because at least with the paint, I can get it to look like way older and kind of match the jankiness of the car.
We're gonna go ahead and get some soap and water and some light Brillo pad action. Kinda massage on the new stripes. Help give it that patina look. And then we should have that thing looking just how I want. This thing is a blast to drive. We're running the 327 small block that we got, and it's got a power glide and whatever 10 bolt came out of my six cylinder 69. GM had it figured out as far as gearing in these things, because this thing just cruises so nice. So nice. It's slow, but it cruises nice. Bam! Four speed swap. Something about a 70s muscle car just isn't the same without banging through the gears. So if we're gonna be loud and obnoxious, we might as well do it while we're banging gears, right? This is a GM Saginaw transmission. I know what you're thinking. Why aren't you going with a Muncie? Well, let me tell you why I'm not going with a Muncie. I'm not going with a Muncie because this one was free. Free. And supposedly rebuilt. We're not gonna check. And I ordered a whole three pedal conversion kit for a 68 to 74 Nova. So we gotta get the pedals in it. And then I went on the marketplace and found a used clutch pressure plate flywheel, used uh, bell housing, used, I paid a hundred bucks for everything. And you know, a couple bucks in ARP bolts. <laughs> Pedals are in there. Clutch pedal is not hooked up to anything yet, but brake pedal is doing the brake thing. But we still got the power glide in this thing. So the power glide is gonna have to come out. Let me tell you, whoever angled these exhaust clamps down like that, don't do that. Don't angle them down like that. Cause then they keep stabbing you like this every time you work on the car. Oh wait, that was, that was me too. Damn it. I suck. Yeah, that has to be buried inside the back of that crank. So. All right. Are we, are we doing the, um, the stand hatch torque specs? As tight as it'll go. Uh, we got a problem. What? This high compression motor is turning over too easy for me. So you want me to put a socket on the front of it? No, I think. 30 pounds of torque is good enough. <laughs> I need a long skinny screwdriver that you don't care about. I think I saw this on YouTube. Are you attached to that one or? No. Okay. <laughs> That's my wrist. <laughs> Are you tied up to 60? Yeah, I'm going right for it. I've got one more. Normally I would go around and double check them. But I charge extra for that and he's too cheap. I'm glad I'm working under the car. It's cleaner than the outside. The Z bar just clears everything. It's, it's tight. All right. Rope. <laughs> Crickets. We all gotta lay under there with you now. <laughs> There's plenty where that came from. <laughs> oh jeez. Alright. Let me know. 
Okay, let me repick. Oh, we're good. Up. Right. Oh, no way. All right, just get it bolt started. This guy told me that this clutch was lightly used. I'm sure he didn't do How any burnouts. Feel? Yeah, go we're good. Yeah, go a little more. Loose or tight? Uh, make it longer. How's that? Yep, perfect. Oh, dude, despite this being in the middle, the shifter is going to be kicked hard to the left. Yeah. So this is no good. No. Okay. Oh, watch me hack this trans tunnel. Oi, oi, oi. I'm sorry, car. What smells like it's burning? The hole I just had to cut. You had to cut it again? Yeah. You're gonna hit the dashboard with the shifter. Seriously? No, I'm just busting balls. The trans is in. We, we still need to install the cross member. The exhaust has to go back on. Drive shaft has to go back in it. <laughs> This car is one of my absolute favorite cars of all time. It is far from perfect and has all of its own unique quirks, but that's what makes it what it is. This thing is cheap, reliable, and a great platform for continuing to improve upon. We strive to build a cool, reliable 70s classic car, and I feel we hit that mark perfectly. The Janko is a vehicle I do not hesitate to jump in and take anywhere and everywhere with my family. Hell, we even made the kids decorate it for a trunk or treat where the car won its first ever trophy. The whole purpose of this build was to prove you don't have to have deep pockets to get into this hobby. Just some hard work and elbow grease and a little creativity will take you a long way. The build of this car even caught some attention and was featured on Hemmings. So get out there and find a cheap project car and piece it back together. Don't get it perfect, just get it back on the road where it can be enjoyed once again, and chances are you will learn something while you do it. This is only the beginning of the Janko Nova's journey, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to see what the future will hold for this ratty muscle car. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.